Okay, hello everybody and welcome to your next SFML tutorial. So, I said in my last tutorial that I was going to be making a tutorial on Pixel Collision, but uh, Pixel Collision isn't really uh, the greatest type of collision. It should be your real, really your last resort when it comes to collision. And uh, coming, like speaking of collision when it comes to SFML, it makes it so much harder to do with SFML. Uh, um, especially when doing it with shapes so I will be teaching it uh, to you but in this tutorial we're going to be learning about a uh, circle collision and it's a collision that I haven't taught in any of my tutorials yet surprisingly because I never really thought about it until now what if you have certain circles that you want to collide with so you're making a pac-man game or something or you have an enemy that's a, uh, a circle a circular shape and you want to find out uh, if there's a collision well, uh, this is how you uh, do collision, a circular collision in your program. So we have the same program as last time. The only thing I've added to the top of the ink, I've included CMath, uh, which or Math.h, whichever one you want to include. Uh, so we need that to actually get the absolute value function, which we're gonna need um, in order to change our, our the way our code is actually executed. So, right here, uh, I should take away this for loop. I don't know why it's... Oh, yeah, I was testing out something else, and I forgot to take it away. So, okay, so if we look at our uh, collision class right now, or collision function, sorry, a lot of things have changed, um, but not, not really much has changed, just our if statement has changed. So, let's look at what is going on. We first of all, this function we get this from the C math include, and it stands for absolute value. And absolute value means that even if the number is say negative, like negative ten, it will convert it into a positive number, and that is really important here. If we we can still use this without the absolute value, but if we don't do this, then we're going to have to multiply everything by the power of two, which is like an extra step which we probably don't need. So might as well change everything to an absolute value. So in order to find out if two circles collide, the proper formula to uh, see if two circles collide would be the uh, the x uh, the x of the center, the center of the circle, the x coordinate of the player, and the x coordinate of the subtract the x coordinate of the object to the power of two plus the x coordinate of the of the player subtract the x coordinate of the object and then you add them to add those two together and then you say if it is less than or equal to uh the radius uh the player's radius plus the enemy's radius uh, or the object's radius by the power of 2 and the reason why you do it by the power of 2 is to uh, to d generate a positive number say my player's position was say at um player's x position was at 100 and the the player, um, the object's x position was at the uh, at the coordinate 110. 100 subtract 110 will give us negative 10. But negative 10 to the power of 2 will give us the the value 100. So in the same way, uh, instead of multiplying everything by the power of 2, we can just set everything to an absolute value. So even if we get a negative or positive number, the formula is still the same and it still works exactly the same whether we have an absolute value or whether we want to do by the power of two but you have to do one or the other so what we do is that we say we get the absolute value by getting the player's x, x position subtract the object position so even if our player is at uh, a coordinate 100 and our object's position x is at coordinate 110 uh, its uh, absolute value is going to return the value 10 no matter even if it's positive or negative so then we get the absolute value of the player's x position subtract the object's x position plus the absolute value of the player's y position subtract the object's y position and then we see if it's less than or equal to their radius is added together now if we scroll down in our program uh, I've changed the shape to circle and both of the radiuses is equal to 5 
so that's why this value is 10 because 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 so if the absolute value of these two added together is less than the radius both of the radiuses added together therefore there is a collision and if there's a collision then we're going to just draw a new position or specify a new position where we sh should start drawing our our object or whatever so this is just to handle circular collision so if you want to test this out we can click f9 on code blocks or we can oh I have break there which I shouldn't so we can click f9 on code blocks or f5 for using Visual Studio and when we run this program we should so we have our circle there and that's a blue circle and if we touch it it appears at a new position scroll I'm gonna scroll this up so you can see it and if we touch the player again then it moves to a brand new position etc etc so it's generally the same program as we had before but it's now circular collision so hope uh, this tutorial was kinda short but hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye